The situation in this problem is that I'm given an inclined plane at some angle theta above the horizontal. On that plane are situated two masses of mass m and 2m. In other words, the second is twice as massive as the first. These are suspended by strings or ropes uh, of tension T1 and T2. And I'm asked to find the uh, tensions that I'm asked to find the tensions T1 and T2. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to note is that the system is in equilibrium. It, the uh, the masses are not sliding down the plane. They're not sliding up the plane. They are sitting still. So I'm guaranteed that this is in equilibrium. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do to make this problem solvable is I'm going to rotate my coordinate system. So instead of your normal up y uh, horizontal x, I will draw a coordinate system that looks like this. <clears throat> if you have not watched the video about the geometry of inclined planes, it is in uh, this playlist or on this YouTube channel. Please go find it and watch it before you watch the rest of this video because I am not going to go into detail of where my vector resolutions come from. They are talked about in that video. Okay, so the first thing to do is draw a free body diagram on these objects. Let me get rid of this coordinate system. Uh, so for my mass m, my free body diagram will look like this. I will have mg, of course, going down. And tell you what, let me let me actually change colors on this. That is mg and I'll go back to black for the other ones and of course I'm going to have T2 directed down the plane T1 directed up the plane and I'm going to have my normal force directed perpendicular to the plane now the procedure here is that I will resolve MG into its components that line up with my new coordinate system MG is lovely as it is if I have an up uh, y horizontal x coordinate system, but I don't. I've rotated it, so I'm going to resolve it into components that look like this. So this is mg cosine of theta. Again, if that does not make sense to you, go watch the inclined plane geometry video. Because as it turns out, this angle is theta. Remember, theta came from the incline of my plane. So we've set up some similar triangles. We found that that angle, uh, that I, well, the angle where I've indicated is theta, just like the inclined plane is inclined to theta. Uh, and I find that this component, my new x component, is mg sine of theta. Right. So this is the normal geometry for inclined plane problems. Again, if you don't see it, please go watch the other video. Uh, but for now, I can continue with this problem. Uh, I'm going to draw the free body diagram on mass 2. So this is the free body diagram on 2, or on 2m, I should say. So here's my mass. And again, I'm going to do that in a different color. This now is 2m. I don't know what that is. 2mg, right? Uh, just the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. My mass is 2m. Uh, and now I can write in up the plane is T2. I've got another normal force. I'll subscript this with a 2. And of course, again, I'm going to resolve my gravity vector uh, into components. Sorry, that last one should be down here. I mean, you can draw it here, uh, that's perfectly fine, but it's easier to see the triangle if you draw it where I've drawn it here. So this will be theta, this will be 2mg cosine of theta, this is 2mg, should be a g, sine of theta. And my free body diagrams are done. That lets me uh, immediately form Newton's second law for both of these objects and solve it. So I'm notice that uh, the quantities I'm looking for, T1 and T2, because of, how, because of how I've oriented my coordinate system, are wholly in the x direction. So for this problem, I'm not even going to bother summing up Newton's second law in the y direction. It's going to be 0. It's in equilibrium. It's going to be 0 in the x direction also. But as it turns out, there's nothing in the y direction currently that I need uh, to solve for T1 and T2. Some cases there will be. 
In this case, there's not. So let me just sum up these things in the x direction. So again, from the 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 first mass, I have the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to m a sub x. It is in equilibrium. This term is zero, which means I just need to unpack my the left hand side of this equation. I'm going to go back to my free body diagram and look at it in the x directions. I've got uh, t1 right here. I've got t2 right here, and I've got mg sine theta right there. Looking at my directions, t1 is negative. The other two are positive. So I'm going to write here uh, t2 plus mg sine, that's supposed to be an s, sine theta minus t1 is equal to 0. Uh, in which case, I can solve this expression for t1 pretty easily. T1 is just equal to T2 plus mg sine of theta. Okay, So I have this expression. Now, I still don't know what T2 is, so I'm not done with the problem. I can come up with mg sine theta, but I don't know what T2 is. So I've got to go look at my other free body diagram and do the same process on the other mass. So let's go back and look. In the x direction, I only have a minus t2 this time since it's directed up the plane. I've got a 2mg sine theta directed positively. Let me get rid of those lines. And I'm going to go sum up those forces. I'm going to go to a new sheet. So this is for mass, the, 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 sorry, the, the 2m. If I write Newton's second law, sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to m a sub x. This time a is still 0. My m now is 2m, right? Remember this m that I've written here is just the general expression. I'm going to substitute in the actual value which I have, which is 2m. And, well, it doesn't matter, it's still 0. But then I'm going to go back and unpack the left-hand side of this equation. And there I have a minus t2 plus a 2mg sine of theta, and that is equal to 0. Let me make sure I've gotten all these forces in there. Yep, minus t2 here, 2mg sine theta here. So, I can go back to that page. I can solve this for t2, and that's easy. t2 is equal to 2mg sine theta. Now I have T2, and if I know what mass is and I know what theta is, I can solve for T2, which again lets me go back to uh, my T1, substitute in for T2, and solve it. Let's see what happens when I put the expression in there. T1, what was T2 again? Well, I've forgotten, and I'm doing this on three different pages, so it is 2mg sine theta from here. So I'm going to go substitute that in. 2mg sine of theta, that's my t2, plus mg sine theta. So if I add that together, what I get out of that is 3mg sine theta, which is not a surprising result if you really think about it. Let's go back to our picture. First, let me notice, this is 3, this is the same thing if I put parentheses here. This is the same thing that would happen if I had a mass of 3m at the end of one string and I was looking for the tension in that one string. So right now I have a mass of m and I have a mass of 2m. If I had one single mass of 3n suspended from a string, I would find that the tension in that string is this expression, which is not surprising. If I go back and look at my picture, if you are this string right here, if you're t1, what you feel is that you're supporting 3m worth of mass, right? We're ignoring the mass of the string that has t2 in it. But what I feel if I'm that string is that I've got 3m of mass that I'm having to support up. So it's not surprising that you find uh, that t1 is equal to the same thing it would be if I had one singular mass of 3m. Uh, so that is actually an important observation, and that's actually a good physics observation. So if you're doing problems like this in the future, once you've worked them through like this, and proven to yourself that that is the case, you can go directly to the step of saying, well, uh, to solve for t1, I'm just going to add up 2m and m, 
and solve it like it's one simple problem with one tension and then you can take the step of solving for T2 later in, in the more complicated system. Hope that makes sense.